Okay, we're getting ready to do assembly. And first I wanna talk a little bit about the glue I'm gonna use. Obviously, you could do this entire assembly with good old standard um, PVA wood glue. That would work. Um, usually, I use different things. Um, particularly as I get into more complex assemblies, I like to have time. I do not I mean rushing around. I don't like it. Um, what I'm gonna use in this case is epoxy resin. Um, and this is one of your standard epoxies you can buy, two-part epoxy, and I'll be using a thickener with it. I'll show you a little bit of that in a bit. But the reason I like epoxy is multiple reasons. Um, first off, it's slow, especially this is a slow setting epoxy. I've got an hour, more, way more than time than I need, but you know, you're not gonna have to rush around, so that's wonderful. The other really important thing, I think, when I get into this sort of mortise and tendon joinery is it's, it's um, gap filling. Epoxy is really good at gap filling. Things like PVA are not. And one of the reasons I do that, so this, this tenon fits in here really nice and snug um, on the big faces, which is where most of the glue strength is. But I've actually got them set up with a tiny bit of gap on the ends which you can see there's a gap there. And the reason I, I didn't size them exactly, I mean, I could have, but this here top piece has to come up exactly flush to these legs is how you want it. Well, if you don't have any bit of play in this, you have to get those mortises set exactly right. And I'm not good enough to do that. So I give myself, you know, I don't know, maybe there's a 16th inch in there that allows me to, to slide it up and down a little bit just to get it flush. And that leaves a little gap there, which would still probably be fine, strong enough, but it'd be better to fill that gap with a glue. And epoxy will fill that gap no problem, especially if you use the thickener that I'll show you. So that's the other reason I like epoxy. One last thing about epoxy that you may not be aware of is that if you're not going to stain or dye the wood, which is I'm not going to here, Epoxy is great because any residual glue just colors the wood the exact same color that an oil-based finish will color the wood. So you don't have to worry about getting all that glue off. It won't, you know, give you these blotchy from the glue. It won't do that um, because it's the exact same color. It'll look kind of ugly after you're done gluing it, like you'll have some sparks are dark because there's some glue there, but it won't matter when you finish it. It will all look perfectly even. And so that's a nice thing about epoxy. Now, if you're going to dye or stain, epoxy is one of the worst because it's kind of hard to remove it all. I would never use it if I was going to dye or stain. But I really like it if I'm not going to dye or stain. So those are the three reasons I like epoxy, and I'll show you a little bit on, on, uh, on how to thicken it. Okay, here I've got a little bit of my epoxy mixed up, and it's not been thickened yet. And the procedure I'm going to use here is something that is described by West Systems Epoxy, very knowledgeable people, on the best way to glue wood is to first coat all the joints with unthinned epoxy. And just, just a light coating of all your glue joints. And the idea here is this thin epoxy before thickening readily absorbs into the wood which you kind of want, because that gives you a good bite into the wood. Um, and then after we coated all the joints with the thinned epoxy, we then put in, um, and again, I'm, I'm just using a pretty small amount. You just want just a thin layer to, 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 to coat the wood, kind of like if you're painting a varnish on or something. Um, but after we've done this, then we're gonna thicken the glue with this little thickener, which I'll show you and you get it quite thick. Um, and then we put a fair amount of that glue into each joint, and then we put it together. And the thick glue, it's important because it serves to be a gap filling purpose. Um, if you don't, and it prevents it from, when it's thickened, it won't want to absorb into the wood very much. Um, but when it's thickened, it'll stay in place. Um, Otherwise, especially with a slow setting glue like this, as thin as this glue is right now that I'm putting on, it'll just run out, you know, because it takes a good, 
it takes a couple hours for this stuff to set up enough that it's not going to run. Um, and so that is very important because if you don't thicken it, it's just going to run out and there's not going to be anything hardly in there. It'll still glue it, but it certainly won't fill any gaps because it'll run out. Um, and so this combination of two steps is what they recommend to give the tightest joint. Now, they also say, well, if you're going to do just one thing, you can just go in with the thick glue and that works pretty good. Um, you don't want to just go in with the, the thin glue, just the epoxy mixed as it is, because um, that's not that's going to not work that great. Um, but you can just skip the, the the first step I'm doing here, and um, and just go with the thick glue. But they say this is better, so it's it's simple enough that I've been following their advice to do it, because you just use the same batch of glue. So you'll first use it unthickened, you just get a little coat on. And, and then I'll come back and put the thick stuff in. Now, the thickening agent. This is something that West System sells. It's called colloidal silica. It's a really light, fluffy material. Um, that's what they recommend is the best thing to thicken the glue, and it's not that expensive. Um, and it takes a fair amount, I'd say, it, but it's super, super light. But it takes an amount about equal to the volume that of glue that you, you, I'm adding it to here. And I just add it and keep adding it until you get to about the right thickness. And the thickness they recommend is something like mayonnaise, so pretty darn thick. I mean, maybe thin mayonnaise, but uh, it's pretty thick. I mean, it's, 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 it won't really flow much. It's more like a, a thin paste, but I'll show you here once I've added it to about the right level. I'm calling that good enough. That's a pretty, pretty thick glue. And now we start putting the joint together. And here, now I put a fair amount in. You know, you want to have enough in there that the excess can fill those gaps. So, you know, don't be don't be stingy on it. Whereas again, the first stuff I put on, I just put on a pretty minimal amount. Here I put some excess in. Um, because we want to fill the gaps. And I probably don't really need to put it on here, but what the heck. All right. Yeah, what's nice is I don't have to hurry. I've got I've got all day to get this. The things aren't gonna grab and bite. And the other nice thing is regular PVA glues, you know, they swell. They'll swell the wood, especially after a little bit. And I've had issues where, you know, come back and, and the thing is swollen, you're having a hard time getting the thing together and you're slamming on it and it's just no thanks. Again, putting a fair amount of glue in there. And we'll throw it on there. Again, I got a little bit of adjustment there to allow me to smooth. And actually, one thing I forgot is it's a good idea to put some on the end grain because actually it's a misnomer. There's actually some good information out there. The end grain gluing provides quite a bit of extra strength. So you definitely want to get that glue on there as well. Okay, there we go. And I had mixed up, oh, what was it? It was about roughly 14 grams of glue, which is roughly a half an ounce of glue. I just mixed up enough about what I need for this. That should be enough.
Finally, for clamping, I like to use these clamps um, when I'm dealing with oddly shaped or angled pieces like this. I, I find that the articulating ends combined with the rubber pads really help them grip pieces without the need for any specially shaped angled calls. They, they don't generate as much force as a regular screw type clamp, but they generate more than plenty for clamping a mortise and tenon joint like this. Okay, now for cleaning up the glue. As I've mentioned, there is no need to completely remove the glue, but you obviously want to get rid of large globs that have oozed out. I first use a very old dull chisel, which I use as a spatula to reach into the corners just to get out most of the excess glue. Then I come back and wipe with a paper towel. There's still some glue present in the wood as evidenced by the dark color of the wood. But as I've mentioned, there's no need to remove this as the color is exactly what an oil-based finish will give. And here I'll be using oil-based polyurethane, uh, though oil-based Danish oil gives the same results. I've not tried this with other finishes such as water-based finishes and I really doubt that it would work well. In that case, you'd want in that case, or if you wanted to dye or stain, I wouldn't recommend epoxy. Instead, use either standard PVA glue, or I like to use Unibon 800, which has the same slow setting and gap filling properties of epoxy, but it's much easier to fully remove by wiping well with water. Here is one other piece of the stool, a platform made out of plywood that the seat swivel attaches to. And in addition, it adds considerable reinforcement to the chair joinery. It's got quarter inch threaded inserts on the top for attaching the seat swivel. The sides are beveled at 8.5 degrees to match the rest of the chair. And it's got a bunch of pocket screws on the bottom to attach it to the chair. It sits at the bottom of the rabbits you see here in the top rail pieces. And finally, this photo shows it installed in place. Here is the final assembly. Uh, this is where the slow setting nature of the epoxy really pays off because this took at least 20 minutes of time to do. And that was no problem at all for epoxy, but could have been with standard PVA glues. Notice that I've attached the top platform piece to one of the leg sets with a couple of pocket screws. And that makes it significantly easier to assemble because of the otherwise it can be kind of tricky to get that platform in place unless you've got an extra set of hands. And then I also use the same set of clamps as I used before. So one last trick is for the installation of those quarter inch threaded inserts you saw in the platform, which are also installed in the bottom of the seat, which you see here. The trick is to thread in a cutoff quarter inch bolt secured with a nut and then use a drill press to help with the installation. The drill press keeps the insert perfectly vertical and provides good downward force to get the insert started nice and perfectly vertical. Otherwise, sometimes things can get messed up if you just try doing them by hand. Um, now, you don't turn the drill on but you just turn, turn it by hand to get them started. And once in a little ways, you disconnect them from the drill and then put them in the rest of the way as usual with an Allen wrench. So here I've finished the base and the seat separately using spray polyurethane. And now I simply need to attach them together with a swivel plate and quarter inch bolts. The one trick with installing a swivel plate is to include an access hole in the mounting platform, like the one shown here, which allows me to reach through the platform to install the bolts into the seat. And here's a video of the installation of the bolts. Um, not much, but you can see that first I have to lower the bolt in place using a pliers, followed by tightening with a screwdriver. And here is the final chair.